and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about an alternative way to do fur. So I'm here working on my uh, Master of Pos Possessions or something. I don't know what this guy's name, original name is. I just thought he was a super cool model and he's actually going to be a Slanesh Chaos Lord for me. So I, like, I got rid of his pistol and gave him little scrolls and uh, on his backpack over here I got rid of the jet turbines and just added some more skulls. Because I thought, hey, you know, that's all fine. Like, the rest of this is all pretty in-world. So, anyway, that's how that is. He's got a different banner, too. But, at any rate, I wanted to... He has this nice fur. And I've been exploring some alternative ways to do fur recently, thanks to uh, Sergio Calvo, uh, who I recently took a class with. And he has a sort of very different technique for how he does fur. So I've been sort of experimenting with his method and, and building on it some. I would highly recommend he, you know, has a Patreon and all that sort of thing. He is an amazing painter. If you get a chance to take a class with him or something like that, I would recommend doing it and or going and checking that out. Um, but I've sort of made some alterations and played with this a bunch and found a way that I kind of like to, to do it. And so it's somewhat different than I think how he does, but that's okay. So here we've got this fur, and I want to talk about how we're going to sketch it in. So what have I done? I, I started by just laying down a little wet blend that goes from like a lighter color here out to here. And let me talk about the tone I'm setting for this. Um, the goal here was to set almost the low tone for it. What I mean by that is think of the darkest you want anything to be, and then move up one step. And I also blended it to be darker in the middle. So like here where it comes into his backpack, it's going to be darker than out here on the edges. Now, of course, we all know the traditional method of fur and I've got videos on it where you just sort of dry brush the fur and, and wash and you can alternate washes and dry brushes and change different areas and add in different colors. That's all fine. None of that is wrong. None of that is false. None of that needs to be forgotten. This is just another way to do it. As usual, there are lots of roads to get to a painted model. I think this one has a really nice look. So I'm going to start here. What I end up, what I actually want to go with with this color, I have here some ivory and some rubber uh, from Secret Weapon. It's just a really nice gray. My ivory is Pro Acryl Bright Ivory. Uh, I've got that in a little Payne's gray here on my palette. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to grab a little of both of these, mix it together because I want to get a nice white gray fur for this guy. So let's kind of get that work in there. I'm not going to add anything else. Paints relatively, I mean, it's been sitting on the wet palette, but other than that, there's no other thinning agent here or anything of that nature. And instead of, I don't, I'm not going to trace each individual little fur line or something. Instead, what I want to do is I'm going to start selecting some areas and blocking them in as clumps. So I'm going to hit the low points as well. I'm going to vary them in size. So you see how I've got those lines in there, right? We want to make sure you're 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 going to try if you just the first time you do this, what will happen is you'll try to be very regular with it. You'll try to always be picking the same size of clump, you'll try to make them ordered, you'll try to make a pattern. Avoid that. Fight against it. Be very random. Be very uh you know, you can use the sculpt, it's there to help you out, but you can see how I'm, I'm varying the size of my clumps, the length of my clumps. This guy's interesting because he also has some feathers mixed in here. They're kind of just like mixed in, so I'll go back afterward and pick those out. But for now, we're gonna kind of ignore them and pretend like they're not there. It'll just make our lives easier. Like that's a feather right there, so I'm just gonna ignore it. So the point is, is that some are tiny, some are big. You notice I'm not varying my color here. That's another feather, so we'll ignore that part. And so on. So we just make our little clumps here. They're up top. But you notice I'm kind of leaving this line from my darker color in between. But other than that, I'm kind of trying to block it in fairly hard. So I'm using paint that flows rather well. 
that isn't a wash and isn't runny. It's just, you know, just sort of a layer consistency. And the goal here is to just basically establish these individual clumps of where fur is coming together. Okay? So then we get something that looks like that. Now, the next thing we do is, and, and right away you can see how that has a very different look and feel than just the normal sort of dry brush. So the next thing I wanna do is we're gonna take some of that ivory and bring it over here and make a higher highlight version of it, but not I'm not all the way to ivory, not even close. I mean, you can see the difference here, right? But I'm lighter than my original. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move across and just kind of hit some of the highlights of my individual clumps. And you notice I'm pulling the light toward the top. I, uh, normally when we would dry brush, we would get sort of the bottoms or the edges of the fur. Whereas here, I wanna actually focus the light near the top of the clump. Always pulling it up. So we just kind of work our way along. One other note is that every so often on these lines, you want to cross your old lines. So like here where I have a distinction line between the two, I can kind of pull that across. In other words, you're going to undo some of your work, but with this brighter color. And what that'll do is it'll create this interesting variance where the color is still naturally separated. Okay. Like even the highlight will then have an automatic shadow because it won't be as strong as it runs over the darker part. You don't do it all the time. You just do it on some of the clumps. But this further creates separation amongst the various clumps, right? Okay. All right, so now we've got some clumpage. We've got some clumpage separation. You can see how basically, you know, with anything white, it's a, it's a question of multiple layers. You can see how much brighter it is when I start applying multiple uh, versions of it. You can see how it's drying darker than when I initially apply it. That's because wet white always seems more bright. Anything with white in it always seems more bright. That's why one of the reasons it can often be very difficult to blend white. Um, that's just because when it's wet and glossy, it will be more reflective than when it's dry and matte. So this is literally just me working around same paint. I have not changed the color yet. But you notice how it's getting more intense where I apply more of it, right? I'm also leaving this shadow part. Okay. So now we're going to go into my pure ivory here, which is going to be my brightest color. And here I'm going to start hitting just the very tops. And instead of doing this in a more, I'm doing this in a very like almost stippling hashing way. Like I'm striking the model with just the tip of my brush in this very simple, quick, short fashion to create these little sort of impression of fur, right? So in other words, instead of going like droop and doing a long line, I'm going, just making little tiny hashes. Just like with the last time, every so often these might cross over, it's okay. The initial guide is just there to create that initial dark separation. We're gonna come back and fix it up. And again, I'm really forcing these light highlights at the very top of the fur, where it's the most buried in there, which seems counterintuitive at first. It feels like you think the ends should be brighter, but by creating this little light toward the top and pushing it in there, you actually sort of trick the eye and you get this really great 
separation of each individual clump of fur because then every single part of this that's the brightest is right up against something that's the darkest. Whereas that wouldn't be the case if we dry brush just the end. This is a, by the way, I, you know, just in case it's not obvious yet, this is a slower method than the other method. But I think it's worth it for the results it produces. Okay? So you see those just tiny little hashes I'm making over and over and over again. Go into some more pure ivory. And I want to really here focus on the areas up top. So for this layer, I'm really just where the light is striking him, which is up here. That's my main light source. That's where I'm really going to build in and make sure that my my lines are nice and strong. And then I'm going in with little tiny hashes. And just really reinforcing the top of that fur. Right? Okay. I know it looks weird because he has these two like feather spots on his back. Here, let me do this. Do, do, do. What we'll do is we'll get rid of them real quick by just, we'll turn them a color that way they're not visually in our way. We'll turn the feathers purple because they'll need to be something that stands out anyways. There we go. All these things are feathers. This like feather integration into fur makes for an annoying thing. So there you go, he has his little feather stripes in there. That'll be more, that'll stop being visually in our way as much. Okay, so now you can see how all this is separated out. I think it's looking pretty cool. You can see how it looks very much like fur because we've slowly peeled back, right? I started with this deep color and then I made the clumps and then I only covered like half the clump and then I only covered like a quarter of the clump, right? Every time covering less and less and every time being very like hashy and you know making these little hash marks with my strikes of the brush to make sure there's another feather right there boy they are just everywhere in this guy he loves his feathers okay so there we go all right now, the next thing you can do is, I mentioned this isn't our deepest shadow. So I had mixed the gray and the white. So here I'm gonna take some of my, or, or sorry, the original color that I did, which had some a little bit of uh, this black leather in it, I'm sorry, from, from, uh, from scale 75. Uh, the original color was this black leather mixed with ivory. So now I wanna take some pure black leather, and this time I'm gonna thin it down. I'm going to pull in a little bit of that same gray I used. So you can see how it's nice and dark. And then what I want to do is I want to find some interesting places to work back in some nice deep shadows. So I'm just going to kind of come in and I'm going to reinforce because as I put all these colors down chances are we made a few mistakes we might have covered up a bit too much stuff here or there. So what I'm really, I'm gonna, and since I've got these feathers, I'll drop a little bit of this there. There we go. But you can see how what I'm doing is just reinforcing some of my shadows, okay? Making sure that I've got really, really nice distinctions between some of the clumps not all I'm not trying to go in and like line everything make sure that each little clump because again the whole point of this process is that it produces something in the end that actually is quite random and feels more like how fur naturally sort of gathers and clumps together 
right? So instead of being uh, something that's completely even across the whole thing, like we would get with a dry brush, what we get is something that varies quite a lot, has all these different tones and shapes and shades in it, and that just makes it feel much more like fur. Okay. Cool. Now, other things you can do from here, if you're so inclined, is you can take, like, like if you want to add some additional colors, let's say I wanted some brown in here, uh, like if I was going to do timber wool fur or something like that, um, I could always take, like, a nice brown glaze and just sort of draw it toward the middle over everything I've done. I'm not going to do that here because I don't want brown in this guy's fur. As you can tell, this model has no brown on it. Um... So, but you could like say grab just a, a seraphim CP or something like that, thin it out and just draw it right toward here. So you could still use a little bit of the wash techniques to tear it up to make more interesting variation out there. The final thing I want to do is I'm going to take my old friend, my FW white ink. We're going to get a little of that out on the palette. Okay. And with the pure white ink, or some kind of pure white paint, at the highest highlights here, I want to make some very, in fact, we're going to switch up brushes. Because the size 2 is just a little too big for this. All this was done with a size 2 and that's fine. But here I want to be really, really precise. So I'm going to grab a nice size 0. There we go. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is just make some very tiny little hashes right in at the top of some of these last spaces. Just reinforcing what I have. If I have a couple things that look a little too dark, this is just sort of final correction stuff. This is adding our last little bit of texture by drawing these lines up. Sometimes I'm tracing an edge. When you put on that dark layer, sometimes you can accidentally go a little too far with it. This makes sure that that stays nice and placed. And again, always focusing toward the top of the the fur piece, the fur clump. Kind of that that's really the big sort of discovery here is that when you pull that light up, it creates this much more interesting effect. You still have a little that's going to naturally go down, but by actually inverting our sort of expectations around the fur, how we would normally think about it, we get something that just feels a lot more natural and varied. And also quite striking, I think, as far as like just the look at the thing goes. So you notice somewhere, sometimes where I went in like a little too big with like the, uh, the shadow, I back that out a little bit, but there we go. And now what I get is this beautiful varied fur that has all these different color tones in it, right? And really looks like this guy's wearing like a rough, almost like if you would think a fur coat looks. Like if you go and look at pictures of fur coats, it's not a hundred little individual pieces of fur, a thousand or a million pieces of like strands of fur, which is what we tend to get out of dry brushing and how these things tend to be modeled. Instead, we get a more mottled, M-O-T-T, -T, uh, look, right? Because we get this clump action that feels a lot more like actual fur. So there you go, that's it. Uh, I will say also, if you want to, the final thing you can do is you can grab something that's not quite your highest highlight, and if you have little end flyaways or something like that, you can hit those, so like you can get a little edge on those guys, because sometimes these fur things have little tiny edge, like just flyaways that might gotten, have gotten hit by other colors, like this guy has this fur that's sticking out on this side, he has these little flyaways, sometimes you see this kind of like reverse fur, that stuff you can just hit in like a near highlight. It doesn't shouldn't be your brightest color, but just something close to that, because you're really just trying to capture that where it has nothing under it here, like on this part, you see these little spiky bits that are coming off. Um, that there's no that light is just passing transparently through that. That's all you're trying to capture there. 
Okay, so that's it. That's how you do, that's a, another method for fur. Uh, you'll fi the picture you see of this guy at the end will actually be him finished up because I'm recording this a little bit in advance so I can take a few moments to finish the rest. He has the rest of his metal to do and I'll attach him. And uh, so you'll see a picture of what this looks like with the feathers done and all of that sort of thing. But there you go, that's basically the premise. Uh, I certainly hope you enjoyed that. If you liked that, give it a like. If you have uh, something you'd like to see for hobby cheating, feel free to drop that down in the comments. Always appreciate suggestions. If uh, subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future, if you'd like to come take a class with me, you can look down below and find my teaching schedule as well as where I'm teaching at conventions. Uh, I'll be at Gen Con and Nova. My classes are down there. Uh, would love to see you in person at either one of my two-day classes or at one of the conventions. But as always, I very, very much appreciate you watching this one, and we'll see you next time.